The mystery, which is the love that we call God, is with you all. Thanks be to all that is holy. On behalf of Holy Cross Lutheran Church, welcome. Holy Cross is an inclusive community which is progressive in approach and Christ-like in action. My name is Don Hutchings and I am privileged to serve as the pastor at Holy Cross. Thank you for joining our Advent worship. You can download the order of service from our website, holycrosslutheran.ca. This is the third Sunday of Advent, and once again, we are admonished to prepare the way for the Holy One. To symbolize our preparation, each week we have been lighting a candle on our Advent wreath. So if you haven't already done so, I invite you to hit the pause button Get your candles ready as Eric lights three candles. And then listen to our musician Marnie Curran's original composition entitled Anticipation. Be sure to stay all the way to the postlude for the second movement of Marnie's composition. May the mystery, which is love, continue to gestate in all of us so that love may be born in, with, through, and beyond us. Thanks be to all that is holy. There's something about a candle, a burning passion to never give up, but to live life regardless. When feeling overwhelmed with grief or regret, when restless or afraid, let a candle's illumination touch your turbulent heart. There's something about a candle, a flickering light, rippling light, healing light, holy light. As always, we worship as we live in the midst of the one who is and who was and who is to come, our Creator, Christ and Spirit One. Amen. What good is it to me if Mary gave birth to Christ 20 centuries ago and I don't give birth to Christ in my person and my culture and my times? So let us prepare room in our lives to bear Christ to the world. In the myths which sustain us, a young woman had the courage to say yes. So let us prepare ourselves to say yes to the plaintive cries we hear all around us. In the myths which sustain us, we hear the echoes of people longing for love. So let us prepare ourselves to join our voices to the cries for peace on earth. In the myths which sustain us, angels sang their glorious praise. So let us lend our voices to the celestial anticipation of love's appearing. Thanks be to all that is holy for the hope which thrives even in the darkness. 
Thanks be to the one who yearns to be born in us, our lover, beloved, and love itself. Let us continue in prayer. Peering into the darkness of the world's misery, we seek wisdom of the Holy One so that we can nurture the love the world hungers for. Let us prepare for the birth of the love gestating in, with, through, and all around us. As we wait, let us not settle for meager mangers to receive love, but open our hearts and minds so that in us love will find a home in which to grow and to thrive. Let the Spirit who dwells among us stir us, move us, and open us to the cries of our neighbors. Let the power of Christ move us beyond sentiment to action. Let the love which is divine work through us to create justice so that peace on earth becomes more than a holiday greeting. Let us give birth to love soon so that all may know joy. We pray trusting the one who is our creator Christ, and Spirit to do great things in, with, through, and beyond us, now and always. Amen.
A reading from Meditations with Meister Eckhart. God will be born in the just person, just as the just person is born into God. For the just person to act justly is to live. Justice is her life, her being alive, her being, to the very extent that she is just. In God, action and being are one. A reading from the anonymous gospel writer we know as John. Then came one named John, sent as an envoy from God, who came as a witness to testify about the light, so that through his testimony everyone might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came to testify about the light, the true light that illumines all humankind. Now the temple authorities sent emissaries from Jerusalem, priests and Levites, to talk to John. Who are you? they asked. This is John's testimony. He did not refuse to answer, but freely admitted, I am not the Messiah. Who are you then? they asked. Elijah? No, I am not, he answered. Are you the prophet? No, he replied. Finally, they said to him, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you have to say for yourself? John said, I am, as Isaiah prophesied, the voice of someone crying out in the wilderness, Make straight our God's road. The emissaries were members of the Pharisee sect. They questioned him further. If you are not the Messiah, or Elijah, or the prophet, then why are you baptizing people? John said, I baptize with water because among you stands someone whom you don't recognize, the one who is to come after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy even to untie. This occurred in Bethany across the Jordan River, where John was baptizing. What a strange advent this has been. In the midst of this pandemic, so many of our rituals and customs have been set aside as we struggle to do our part to slow the numbers down and bend that curve. 
I don't know about you, but I don't have much of an appetite for John the Baptist's ranting and raving this Advent season. Public health leaders, politicians, and pundits of every kind have been endlessly pleading with us to wear our masks, wash our hands, stay home unless it's essential to go out, and worst of all, do not gather with friends and family over this Christmas period. I don't need some ancient prophet's words echoing down through the generations, crying to us from the wilderness, pleading with us to prepare the way for our God. This is a strange Advent season in my home. We put up our Christmas tree early this year. Normally, we wait choosing to stay in the dark blue hues of Advent. But this year, knowing that it will just be the two of us, we have made an extra effort to decorate our home with all the trappings of Christmas. We've even violated our custom of trying not to play Christmas carols until Christmas. So I've been hearing Oh Holy Night over and over again, um, and it seems a little premature, but that line is stuck in my head, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Hmm, Lord knows our world is weary. So how shall we rejoice this year? I wonder as I wander around the empty sanctuary here, what it will be like not to see many of you this Christmas Eve. I've been wondering what it will be like not to hear the familiar sounds of your voices singing with such reverence. And I've been anticipating my own sadness at not seeing many of you raise your candles in the darkness as we sing Silent Night with such hope and gladness. Considering all that we have been through this year and all the challenges which lie ahead in the coming months, is it any wonder that the sentimental aspects of our beloved Christmas traditions are haunting our Christmas preparations in the midst of the countless restrictions we are trying to cope with? Oh, how we long, not for the darkness of reality, but for the darkness of our visions of some silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Our imaginings of the way things were just might get in the way of our ability to experience any peace or any joy at all this Christmas. Within the contours of our imagined sentimental Christmas scenes, the mess of life is all too often swept under the carpet of straw in that stable upon which the gorgeous Holy Family stare placidly at adoring shepherds and angels under the perfect glow of a celestial star. Even when we shift our gaze from the delightful stable to our own remembered Christmas gatherings, the mess of life is all too often swept under imaginary rugs so as to ensure that the reality of life in community can't threaten to undo our visions of perfection. COVID may be an unwelcome visitor this Christmas, but every Christmas has its unwelcome visitors. I think that's why the anonymous gospel storytellers allow John the Baptist to strut his stuff way out by the Jordan River somewhere in the wilderness so as not to have him intrude on our treasured tales of Jesus' arrival. There's nothing silent nightish about John the Baptist as he rants and raves about the, the need for people to repent and warns anyone within shouting distance that it is time to prepare the way for the arrival of someone who will turn everything they have ever known around. For repent literally means to turn around. Repent, stop going in the direction you've been going all your lives and turn around. Prepare a new way of being. Prepare the way for our God. Christmas, no matter how you understand it, Christmas isn't much like Silent Night. 
The way which John the Baptist is screaming at us to prepare is not a way which will accommodate sweeping the messes of life under the straw or indeed even under the rugs of our imaginations. Christmas is so much more than the silent night of our longings. Christmas, if it is any kind of Christmas at all, includes all the messiness we bring to it. Think about it. The story of new birth is never pretty. It's not tidy, nor is it silent. Life is chaotic. Life is messy. Life is far too full of contradictions to ever be adequately captured by our sentimentality. If your visions of Jesus' arrival resemble the scene depicted in Silent Night, you really haven't understood the chaos which new birth brings. Christmas is not about heavenly peace. About as close to Silent Night that Christmas ever gets is shepherds quaking at the sight. We ought to quake at the very idea of love being born in us. Christmas is a radical, subversive parable which was written to challenge whatever peace we have made with the chaos in our lives, a parable carefully crafted to reject our impulse to pull the covers over our head and pretend that life isn't happening the way it is happening. Christmas is chaotic precisely because it is in the midst of chaos that we encounter the one who is. That's is with a capital I and a capital S, is the third person singular of the verb to be, the one who is, the one our ancestors knew as Yahweh, the great I am, that's am in capital letters, the first person singular of the verb to be, Yahweh, The I am is not off in the heavens looking down at some angelic nativity scene. The one who is, is as Jesus taught us with his very being. The one who is, is love. And as love, the one who is, is to be found in all the muck and the mire, right smack dab in the midst of our chaos. For not only do we live and move and have our being in the one who is love, this very one, this divinity, this God, if you will, works in, with, through, and beyond us in all of our chaotic mess, constantly creating hope in the midst of despair, creating justice in the midst of injustice, creating vaccines in the midst of this pandemic, and offering compassion kindness and love as we work together to keep as many people as possible safe and healthy. Even in this COVID chaos in which we are locked down, love is working miracles. We are not alone in this chaos. Christmas is the celebration of new birth and birth is chaotic messy, frightening, painful, and anything but silent. The parable of Christmas is a raw story, a bare bones story to which we have added our own desires for a silent night. Whatever our imaginings about that holy night may be, one thing we can know for sure. There was nothing silent about Jesus' birth. It was a birth like any other birth with all the mess of blood, urine, mucus, pushing, screaming, and amniotic fluid. This birth had more than its fair share of fear and anxiety. Whatever Jesus' birth was, it was not the silent night of our dreams. Jesus' birth was just like your birth and my birth, like every birth. Jesus' birth was chaos, filled with the excitement and the worries which come before something wonderful happens. I suspect that Jesus' young mother Mary was screaming, cursing, pushing, crying, bearing down and sore afraid. Christmas was not a silent night and therein lies our hope for the world. For a God who is a creator of angelic, surreal nativity scenes would be a God far removed from the chaos and the reality of our lives. 
a God who is devoid of the messiness of life, isn't any kind of God that I want to be part of, let alone worship. I need to know that we are all part of something so much bigger than we can begin to imagine that isn't some kind of distant creature, aloof and separated from the reality of our lives. I want to be part of the source of all, all that is, a deity, a force, a love, which is capable of working in, with, through, and beyond us to bring order out of chaos, to inspire scientists to create vaccines. I want to be part of the one who weeps with those who weep, who suffers with those who suffer, a love which dances, sings, laughs, and rejoices whenever and wherever love emerges in the midst and the mess and chaos of life. I want to be part of a love which is beyond my ability to comprehend, and yet a love which works in, with, and through those who work to heal the sick, care for the dying, toil away in laboratories seeking vaccines, who work for justice for the poor, the oppressed, and the marginalized, a love which works in, with, through, and beyond us to heal the wounds of the afflicted. I want to be a part of a love which challenges us, and at the same time, a love which allures us in ways which empower us to live fully, love extravagantly, and be all that we are created to be. The Christmas story is the story of such a love, love which emerges in the midst of chaos, love which empowers us to prepare new ways of being, love which is born in a baby, for this is how love is always born. This is how love was born in you. At your birth, love came into the world, and in you lie the hopes and dreams of all the earth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Fall on your knees, fall on your knees, and love will be there. Love, which is the mystery we call God, is gestating in you. We will get our silent night. It may not be the silent night of our sentimental rememberings, but like all nights, it will provide darkness from which we can give birth to love, love powerful enough to bring peace on earth and healing to the nations. Prepare the way for love to be born here and now. Trim your trees, mull your wine, wrap your presents, sing carols, zoom, zoom, zoom as we must, reminisce to your heart's content. As you stay home, stay safe, keep your neighbors safe, and make room for love to be born here and now, love which is beyond the beyond and beyond that also, love which is our Creator Christ and Spirit One. Amen.
are invited to respond to each petition with the words, One in Christ, let us give birth to love in the world. Wherever we are, we pray together, trusting that we are one in the presence of mystery. Remembering that we are beloved children of a gracious creator, let us open ourselves to the love in which we live and move and have our being, trusting the Spirit to breathe in, with, through, and beyond us, empowering us to give birth to love in the world. One in Christ, let us give birth to love in the world. Generations of longing for a Savior to make all things better has not brought peace to the nations. Let us shun the pride of the mighty ones who deny humanity's power to care for the least among us. Let the cries of our neighbors stir us from complacency and move us to becoming champions of the poor, healers of the sick, heralders for justice, and seekers of peace. One in Christ, let us give birth to love in the world. As glad tidings of vaccines fill the media, let us remember the privilege we wear like crowns does not adorn all those who are suffering. Let us look beyond our privilege and do what we can to encourage, cajole, and demand that our leaders ensure that the least among us will also have access to vaccines, medicines, treatments, and financial aid so that people everywhere can begin to heal from the ravages of this pandemic. One in Christ, let us give birth to love in the world. As a weary world focuses on the desire to celebrate Christmas and ring in a new year, let us not forget the travesties perpetrated on the powerless this year. Let us seek wisdom, which nurtures love, to empower us to mend what is broken and walk away from those things which destroy what is good. One in Christ, let us give birth to love in the world. As fear of the unknown threatens to make us selfish, let us remember the love of which we are made, so that we might discover the courage we need to take risks for the sake of peace. One in Christ, let us give birth to love in the world. As loneliness and grief threaten to overwhelm us during this locked down season, let us remember the many blessings we take for granted so that we can find ways to reach out to one another to find joy. One in Christ, let us give birth to love in the world. As each day brings us closer to Christmas, let us remember to pause and open ourselves to the one in whom we live and move and have our being, so that we might find strength to be all that we are created to be. Our, our hope lies in the promise of Christ being born in, with, through, and beyond us. Our hope is realized in the one who is beyond the beyond, and beyond that also, our Creator, Christ, and Spirit One. Amen. An interpretation of the prayer that Jesus taught. Loving presence, luminous in all creation, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. May we reflect on earth the yielding perfection of the heavens. Help us to receive an illumined measure from the earth this day. Forgive us when we trespass against others, human and other than human as we forgive others who trespass against us. Keep us on the path of wisdom when we are tempted to take the selfish path. May it be your rule we follow, your power we exercise, and your radiance which allures. May this be the truth which guides our lives, the ground from which our future will grow, until we meet again. Amen. Love, which is the mystery we call God, is gestating in you. We are going to get our silent night. 
It may not be the silent night of our sentimental rememberings, but like all nights, it will provide the darkness necessary from which we can give birth to love. Love powerful enough to bring peace on earth and healing to the nations. Prepare the way for love to be born here and now. Trim your trees, mull your wine, wrap your presents, sing your carols, zoom your zooms as we must, and reminisce to your heart's content as we stay home, stay safe, keep our neighbors safe, make room for love to be born here and now, love which is beyond the beyond and beyond that also, our Creator, Christ, and Spirit One. Amen. Time for the announcements. Well, we are preparing the way to celebrate Christmas, and we know that this is going to be challenging, but we will worship and we will rejoice together, even if it will be online. The worship team is working hard to prepare uh, a Christmas worship video, which will be posted on Christmas Eve so that you can worship anytime you want, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, or indeed, any of the 12 days of Christmas. One of the things the worship team is hoping for is your active participation. It has been a very long time since we were able to pass the peace to one another, but if ever there was a time for us to pass the peace, it is this Christmas. So we're asking each and every one of you to pass the peace. We want you to make a a short video or take a photograph or you can even paint a picture, whatever you are moved to create and then send it to us via Dropbox or email it to us before Wednesday, actually by Wednesday, December the 16th and, and we will take your offerings and create an online piece which will be included in the Christmas worship video. Now the links to the Dropbox are in the order of service and they're also posted under the announcement tab in, on our website. Speaking of um, online, if you are new to our community, please, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to introduce yourself to our community by passing the piece. Um, so participate with us and we'll include you in our video. Um, you can share the piece any way you like. It can be as simple peace be with you, or peace on earth, goodwill to all, or as some of us have learned during these Zoom days, peace, peace. If you need help creating your greeting, don't hesitate to send us an email and someone will get in touch with you to help you out. Andrew's even volunteered to show up at your house and do a socially distant recording of you sharing the peace. So get in touch and uh, we'll give you a hand. We want to have as many of you as possible represented in this video. For now, let me bid you peace. The peace which surpasses all our understanding is with you all. Thanks be to all that is holy. Shalom, dear ones. Shalom.
We hope that you have found this broadcast to be of value to you at this time. To continue to offer these, we depend on the support of donors. If you wish to help to keep us going, please donate what feels right for you via Canada Helps to Holy Cross Lutheran Church, Newmarket. Peace be with you.